Okay, hello again everybody. I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching today. We're going to do a special painting today. That's one that I've kind of taken on as a challenge, I guess, uh, for from some of the folks on uh, one of the websites or Facebook pages that I uh, frequent. And uh, so we're going to do a uh, nice scene here, sort of a marshy, kind of a swamp type scene, but it's a sunrise photo. So uh, I uh, have this photo that's been uh, provided by uh, one of the members of the Bob Ross Appreciation Society, his name is Dennis Coleman, and uh, he found this photo and thought it might be a good uh, thing to try to paint. So uh, several people said, I'd like to paint that, I'd like to paint that, and so I did too. And so I said, well, I will try to paint it and uh, have it on my live channel uh, today. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I want to uh, show you, we're going to paint it in a portrait format. I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, but I want to go over to the computer and show you a couple things about the photographs that I did to change the uh, aspect ratio and how I got to this particular composition. So hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm at my computer now and I want to uh, show you the uh, original photo that uh, Dennis Coleman provided. Um, this is it. It is a very long aspect ratio, I guess I would call it. Uh, it's got about a 1 to 1.7 ratio, which doesn't fit typical uh, uh, canvas sizes, at least the canvas sizes I paint on. So uh, I wanted to crop it, so I cropped it down to a uh, to fit a 16 by 20 canvas. Um, that has a re aspect ratio of 1 to 1.25. So this is a much better ratio of a painting. So I basically cropped a little off the top, a little off the bottom. and. Uh, that's what we're going to use as our uh, image today. And uh, I also then put a grid over it, which you know I, a lot of times I use a 4x5 grid. And uh, that works very nicely on a 16x20 canvas, I should add, that it's each, each line is like 4 inches apart. You have 16 inches across the top, so divide that by 4, you get a, f a 4 squares. And then down the side, you get uh, 5 squares, so it's a 4x4 four easy to calculate to make a 5x4 pattern and then you use that grid as you know to uh, trace some of your uh, sketch on if you're going to have a sketch. Unfortunately uh, much of uh, this is not going to be handled by a sketch as most Bob Ross painting techniques. Uh, he never used a sketch that I saw so uh, it's hard to do a sketch when you paint the whole canvas with uh, liquid white to start with so uh, I uh, I deviate from that sometimes and work with a sketch, but uh, today I'm going to use a very bare bones sketch that I have. Um, but one thing I do that I know that Bob Ross did not do was uh, I try to break down the photograph into a set of patterns, uh, uh, medium, light, and dark uh, values, value patterns. And so I go through and take this photo into my Photoshop and I just sort of kind of lay out what would be a nice set of values for here and where the darks need to be and where they need to be connected and what the mid values should be and where the light values should be. So this is what I call a value map. And uh, you can get this from my website along with the uh, grid. And I actually have a sketch of it, which is really a photograph of the canvas, canvas you just saw, which is not a great photo. It's not a great sketch. Um, so uh, anyway, with that said, I want to go back now to my easel and uh, let's get started on this. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the paints and brushes, and uh, we'll get going. Okay, I'm back. Um, I want to tell you that the two groups that I'm a member of on Facebook, there's one called the Wet and Wet Wet on Wet Paint Wet on Wet oh, Gee Whiz Wet on Wet Painting Club, uh, and uh, it, their uh, their description of their group says keeping all mighty mountains and happy clouds alive forever for Bob Ross and Bill Alexander. So. People that uh, frequent that uh, Facebook page like the wet on wet painting technique, and so there's a lot of photos po of paintings posted out there, and uh, they have a lot of discussion about the painting techniques and that sort of thing that Bob Ross used, that Bill Alexander used. Uh, the Bob Ross Appreciation Society is the other group that I'm a member of, um, and their description says it's a group for anything relating to the talented Bob Ross. So anything that anybody has to say or uh, do or copy in, in terms of uh, Bob Ross and his, uh, 
his uh, style, his techniques uh, is welcome on that site. So I uh, frequent both of those groups. They both have a lot of members. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, some of the folks are joining me today from one of those groups or each of those groups and uh, we'll go through the painting today. Um, as I said, this photo came from one of the Bob Ross uh, group members named Dennis Coleman. So I want to thank him if he happens to be watching. Um, anyway, let's go back now to the uh, my uh, palette and I want to show you the uh, paints that I have. I'm not using the big Bob Ross uh, uh, palette, but I'm using my, uh, this is my standard palette I use for most of my oil painting. It's really portable. I can take it and cover it up and take it with me. Uh, my brushes, I have the uh, standard brushes. These are the two inch brushes that Bob Ross uh, had. Um, we have a one inch brush. Uh, I have these round, these are called uh, half rounds. Um, and so they make some very nice tree, the, the wispy types of tops of trees, the typical fan brushes, two of those. I have three riggers here and I have the uh, trusty old um, um, <laughs> palette knife here that uh, we'll, we'll use some today. Um, so those are my brush sets that I have. I may pull out another brush here for some of the fine detail work, but I don't know yet. Um, I also have my uh, palette here. Uh, I have a, a tray of uh, liquid white and uh, I'm going to cover the whole canvas with that in a second. And then I also have some liquid black that I may use in some spots. Uh, I don't know that Bob Ross ever did that either, but uh, for this particular photo, I think it may help us with getting the getting the, enough uh, dark dark paints on there. Um, I want to also tell you some of the folks are keying in from the uh, chat room here. If you type in something through the chat, I will try to read it and welcome you or say hello to Bit Toad from o Oxford. England and El, uh, Karen S. from uh, Germany, I hope. But guten Abend, guten, guten Tag, guten Abend to you. Um, so uh, this is what we're going to do. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my canvas here. Whoops, I want to tell you about the paints. Do the paints first. Sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So I told you about the paints here. Um, on my uh, palette here, I have, uh, a, well, I don't have a full set of Bob Ross paints. I have a little bit of a limited palette. I have titanium white, I have midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. And I have a little bit of a Grumbacher paint that I add sometimes uh, called uh, ultramarine violet. So that's the paint. You saw the brushes, talked about liquid white. Uh, let me tell you about my canvas here. Uh, I always cover my canvas with gray gesso, usually. Gray, this gray gesso is a nice mid-tone. I have a little uh, value bar over here on the side of my uh, easel from black to white. And so this canvas is right about midway. Uh, so if you need a color that's darker than mid-tone, uh, it has to be darker than the canvas. If you need a tone that's lighter than the mid-tone, you have to be lighter than the canvas. So that works. Uh, for painting except when you cover the entire canvas with liquid white, which we're about to do. Um, so many of my oil paintings, if you look at my other videos, you'll see that I use this as a guide to help try to get values better, make better values uh, on the, in the painting. Um, so I want to explain why that's gray, but this is typical gray uh, gesso from the Bob Ross uh, uh, paints that you can buy anywhere. Um, okay, so let's get going. Um, I'm going to try to cover this whole thing with uh, liquid white right now and uh, with my big brush and uh, I want to put on the palette for you so you can see it here with the live broadcast. Um, this is being recorded with uh, one, two, three, four cameras. So I, when this is finished, I always come back and make a uh, another follow-up video. Uh, re-edit the video and uh, and uh, put another version out on YouTube so we don't just have the live version from the from the painting uh, session that we're doing right now. This should be very thin um, and if I can see a little bit of the gray uh, gesso coming through I'll know that I'm probably just about right with the uh, with the amount of paint that I'm putting on here. Um, now right in here we're getting close to the horizon line so let's 
see here. And then, then take a second. I want to get make sure I get this. I want to go down just a little more to the horizon, right about here. Um, hi, Mark. Good to see you, Mark. Side bottom. <laughs> Oil painting is hard. I see that. Yeah. Well, uh, try to take a little bit of the pain and misery out of it for you if I can. Uh, and down here, I'm going to put come down from the bottom and start going up because I want this reflectivity in the sky to uh, come up and it's going to go into this area here like something like this. So I'm kind of customizing a little bit where I put the liquid white which is something I do frequently just to uh, sort of maybe remember where things are or uh, things I don't want to forget. Um, all right, so let's look at that. All right, now we have um, move my uh, easel over just a little bit. Take me out of the painting here. I'm I'm doing this for the uh, live class, so I can leave my palette over on the right side here, and it's not covering any of the painting. I'm going to touch just a little bit of this liquid black. I'm going to try something very different here. Right in this area, we're going to put in some liquid black, and we're going to just sort of let it blend as we go up. And then we're going to take it down. Sort of do the same thing. Take a little more here and just sort of let it blend. I got a lot of white in my brush. It's kind of coming out here. You can see that. Uh, <laughs> but this really darkest part here is going to be the horizon. And so we're going to let this thing bleed and bleed into uh, the colors below and uh, we'll have a nice interesting layout here of this, this scene. All right, I don't know if you've ever seen Bob Ross do that. Maybe so, if you have. I, I've seen dozens of hours of, of his uh, videos, uh, but I don't remember. I've seen him use liquid black not liquid. Well, I've seen him use liquid black, but I've seen him use uh, black gesso on the canvas before he starts painting. And uh, sometimes he'll use that to do a swamp scene or a night scene or something like that. But uh, I don't know that I've actually seen him mix liquid black and liquid white at the same time on the on the canvas like this. Okay, the sound is great. Olivia says the sound is great. That's good. Um, all right, so that's our thin coating um, of liquid white and liquid black. So um, I want to get this brush cleaned out a little bit. I'll just put it into my cleaner there. Have another brush if I need to use it. Okay, so now we're going to start on the sky. We're going to start at the back, as we always do, and uh, we're going to start coming down. I'm going to get some liquid white now and titanium white and a little bit of yellow ochre. Don't need much. Uh, yellow ochre. We're going to start with this background. I'm going to put just a touch, <laughs> way too much, put just a touch of bright red in there to make it a little orange. Uh, a little orange here. Uh, more ochre. So you can see the color I'm trying to get is this color that's in the sky back here. Wouldn't have to match it perfectly, but I want to try to get it fairly close. And uh, we're going to just start up here and start coming across. That's a little bit too pink. Put a little more ochre in it. And I'm picking up that white that's underneath, right? So it's uh, um, making everything lighter. But there's a, there was a pink tone to the sky a little bit. I don't know if you recognize that or realize that, but um, this is just almost pure yellow ochre. And I'm going to put a little bit of Change the color a little bit. Put a little bit of the uh, Indian yellow in there, uh, 
as we get closer to the sun over here. Ochre, Indian yellow, just a touch of bright red in there in some spots. Uh, okay, so I'm just doing my X's and it uh, looks darker here on the uh, canvas that it does for you. I've got some bright lights shining on me here and uh, it lightens up what you see on the video I'm sure a little bit but just want to make this add a little color in here um, add the pinks so this Sun is uh, to be careful here I don't want to get too um, and I don't now right now if you look at that it looks like I've almost cut this canvas in half and the horizon is should be above that shouldn't be that far down so I'll bring the black up here in a minute and we'll start moving up here I see some hairs I'm picking up so I'll see if I can get those out really no clouds to speak of in this sky it's all pretty much ochre over white a little bit of Indian yellow in there and uh, about it okay so now let's take a second look at this all right now I've got to put my Sun like right about in I think the Sun's gonna go right about here right about in there um, I want to well I've got this yellow going I want to well, I've got this in my brush I want to come down and put the same color down here in the foreground in the water so I'm getting more ochre more Indian yellow and we're going to start about where this break point is here and we're going to just kind of paint it down this way a little bit more ochre Indian yellow touch of red not much um, bring it down here okay I have to make sure this is level one of the things that because I paint to the side and I don't stand in front of the canvas I have to uh, be careful that my lines don't go at an angle so I want to try to make sure that doesn't happen all right here we go I'll put in a few more spots of this bright yellow all right, I think that's going to work pretty well. All right. I have a, I can see my, uh, behind me I have a monitor behind me and I can uh, check to see what the, what the color looks like there. Um, what I want to try to do now is get this sun in and uh, big hair right there so right about in this area here we're going to use the old paint me a sun trick you've seen Bob Ross do that many times probably if you watch his videos put a little more paint on there draw a little circle try to make it as round as possible in this case uh, I'm going to have another little spot down about right here where this is going to reflect in the water. It's going to be about right in here. Uh, it doesn't have to be quite as uh, bold or as it's perfect. Um, but let me see if my brush is cleaned out here. A big old brush. Okay, let's see here if we can get um, take this brush I've cleaned it out this is the one I had my uh, colors in a while ago and uh, I'm going to just come back and just sort of give a nice soft like this ok 
Okay. Down here, a similar thing for right now. Just give it a, just like that. Okay. Um, hope you're able to see that pretty well. All right. Now, where are we? All right. Now it's time to start coming in with some of these uh, darker colors. Start putting those trees in the distance in the middle ground. And uh, I'm going to use my uh, round brushes for those. Get this uh, one inch brush cleaned out. Get going here. All right. Well, so far I keep dropping my paper towel here. All right. Uh, big round brush. Uh, we're going to use that to get these trees in the background and uh, I'm going to use my a mixture of midnight black and my white, titanium white, and try to get a uh, nice gray, grayish color. I don't have any blue on this palette. Don't have any green on this palette. But I want this to be darker at the bottom and I want it to fade up the top. So I'm going to start down here close to the horizon. I'm going to start in this area and I'm going to work my way up. So when I do that, what happens is, is that it gets lighter because as I'm stamping it in, it's going to uh, lighten up. So let's start about somewhere in here maybe. Need more black, need more white. All right, let's get plenty of paint in this brush. So, plenty of paint. I'm still able to get the uh, colors coming through the, the sky. Yes, Olivia, oil painting is much easier to blend than acrylics. Yeah, acrylics, uh, because of the way they dry, you know, they're water based, but they uh, also dry. Uh, fairly quickly, so you have to uh, be right on top of them to do much blending at all if you want to blend with acrylics. Uh, but here the paint stays wet and uh, we can keep going over it. That's what's nice about this wet in wet, wet on wet uh, painting method. I'm going to come all the way over here and just finish this out. We've got a whole bunch of trees over here. Um, I'm just using pure uh, midnight black and some titanium white together, mixing them and getting different values, getting darker values at the bottom here, putting lighter values at the top where I connect these to the, to the uh, horizon line here. I want it to be darker. Because of that liquid white underneath, it does wash out a lot. Uh, but I can always come back and put more on. And uh, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Okay, so you see the depth. I'm creating depth now. I got the sky. I got some lighter trees in the back. I got some little darker trees in for front of those. So that shows you anytime you can do that, you're creating another, what did Bob Ross call it? Another plane, P L A N E. And uh, when you do that, you're creating depth in your painting. So think about that when you're trying to layer your uh, paints onto a canvas. All right, so I've got another, some big trees in here front, but I'm going to just kind of 
leave this the way it is, I think, right now. Maybe just a little bit more out here. This looked like it was a little bigger than I had shown it. All right. A little darker over here, maybe. So that's our first pass at the, the middle ground. Now we've got this dark um, line in there. It's really a uh, I, I, some sort of an outcropping of some kind here. It's, uh, I'm not sure. It's probably just um, I don't know, like a, not, probably not a sandbar, but it's probably just uh, weeds growing and stuff that's taking up uh, space in this lake or swamp, whatever it is. I don't know how much of this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. So you're getting to see me. I haven't done this painting before, folks. I don't know if uh, I told you that before, but uh, I'm using some of this violet. I'm going to come right in here and just see if I can put in a, a few marks across here to put in this dark background. I'm uh, using my violet and midnight black and a little of my brown. And we're just going to put in some horizontal streaks here. It makes this background work. Now there, I think I went up a little bit, or maybe I didn't. Let's see here. Feels like I went up, but I didn't, I guess. Get it in there, and then we'll... Uh, make a few more spots here and there okay so that is at least some of the uh, something to work with um, I may come back and put a little more in there but I'm going to take this and just kind of pull it down and we're going to get a going to get this still water feel This is what makes the water look like it's not moving. Vertical brush strokes. Right? That looks like a very, very calm, serene area. And I'm going to add just a little more white to that because I want it to lighten up just a little in some spots. So I'm going to come down here and put a, maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. Put in a few lighter streaks here to lighten it up just a little. Get it darker on that side, maybe a little lighter on this side pull down some of this color I've got in the uh, background there. See how nice that looks when you uh, just pull down these vertical streaks. All right, we're making progress here, folks. Good, good. Um, well, I got my big brush here. I'm going to, it's cleaned out. I cleaned it out a while ago, so I'm going to uh, use it to put some horizontal marks across here again to just sort of smooth that out. This looks almost too, uh, too many vertical streaks. It looks kind of contrived. I want to just, the term for this is two hairs and some air. There you go. All right, so that helps it blend much nicer and you don't have to uh, worry too much about it. So instead of putting in some white streaks in there, which Bob Ross would always take his palette knife and put some white paint on it, uh, we'll probably come in and take some of this uh, black uh, or brown, Van Dyke brown or black, get a little roll of paint and just come in and maybe do the same kind of thing, thing he would do when he put the white streaks in there. We'll put some of these dark little areas here if I can get them to work. Need more paint than that, folks. Got to get something on the end of the knife. Like that. 
There we go, something like that. What's that look like? If I don't like it, I can always come back in here and just sort of redo it. But right now I'm going to just put in a few of these and see if that will work. Okay, touch that up a little bit there. All right, it looks like some land or some something back there. It's, it's part of that this lake anyway, that's for sure. All right, now let's take our fan our uh, script liner, get some uh, thinner in it. More thinner than that. All right, let's get some put some trees in this background here. There are some trees. They're hard to are very hard to see, and they're fairly light. But I want to put some in back here in this area, so you can't hardly see that. I can hardly see that. So I'm just taking some black in this with a lot of. Um, a lot of uh, thinner in it. Sometimes I stop talking or I, I think because I'm trying to use left brain, right brain at the same time and <laughs> it takes a little bit of work to do that sometimes. But that's what I, I like this. This is fun. I see several people don't like acrylics. Huh? Well, that's uh, that's why the art paint manufacturers make all these different paints, folks, so we can all have something we like. So I'm just put, putting a few more things in here to make it look like there's some little light things floating around back in there. All right. Now those are light. Now I'm going to come in with a little darker. Now I'm going to come in on top of those. I'm going to put in some more darker trees and uh, these trees are going to go probably down to this area here let me see yeah about here's where the bottom I want to make sure I get this at the right place um, so like right in here somewhere we got this big old tree it kind of goes up like that don't have enough paint in this brush that's what sometimes I'll use other brushes than the Bob Ross brushes. In particular, I'm doing something like this. I want to get more paint in a brush. I might need a different type of brush. So these kind of go up like that. Put a few more, a little more in there. Like this, come back. Another thing I can tell you, a little trick I've learned. Um, when you're making branches on trees, um, think about painting in a the way the uh, in the in the hands of a clock. If you think about painting branches on a tree like this, you want them to go out like this. You don't want them to all stick sideways. You want them to go out at a an angle, as if it was like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, that type of thing. If you do that, you'll get them flaring out at the right, right angle. And uh, so let's just put a few more in here like this. Um, I'm losing this paint because it's not thin enough in some cases. It's picking up the paint underneath it and uh, We've got some other trees that start down here at the bottom like this. Uh, go up. I'm going to make sure I get this thick enough so you can see it. It's a little bit too light there in some spots, isn't it? Let's put a little more dark in there. All right. Um, and we'll come back and put a few more things on top of this. 
do these while I'm here. Um, got some more trees. There's another one or two. There's another big one here. I'm going to come down about the same spot and try to make him go in here like this. And while I've got this, let's put another little one in here. Like that. So these are just trees that are kind of growing out of the marsh, out of the swamp or whatever. Uh, and um, they all have these sort of branches going off of them. Some are going more vertical than others, but in every case they're kind of coming out I don't want to put all these in here, folks. If I did, I'd be here for a couple days putting all this in. Uh, but this is not supposed to be a total realistic view of the painting of the photograph. I'm trying to just give you the impressions that it gives me um, as I'm painting this stuff here. Um, there, it's really kind of fun to be impressionistic with it and kind of let it, let it flow. Okay. Okay. Mark asking something about black oils. I guess you mean the black, the liquid black maybe, Mark? I'm not sure if that's uh, what you were talking about there or not, but uh, black oil paint. Um, but the Bob Ross color is called Midnight Black, but it has, it turns gray and it has some uh, other colors in it. When you get it, anything in it, it really lightens up really fast. Um, but um, there are other black oil paints that uh, are blacker. There's Lamp Black, there's Ivory Black. Um, a lot of those are um, they, they have a blacker blacker consistency, I guess I want to say, than uh, maybe these. Uh, all right, there's some trees there. Um, I'm going to put some more. I've got, there's a couple of them that are sticking in this section out here. Uh, get me some more thinner, thin this down a little bit. Um, in this area here, I've got some trees that are sort of sticking up in this area, like right here. I'm going to just sort of connect one to this branch that I made there. Um, there we go. Okay. So you're watching me struggle with this as you might struggle because I've never done it before. <clears throat> I did find out in reading uh, or listening to Bob Ross's biography on his Facebook or his YouTube channel that <clears throat> he typically would have he typically did every painting about two or three times. Every painting that he did, he always had one off camera saying there that he was looking at. So when he said, let's put this little cabin in here, let's put this little tree there. He already knew what he was going to do because those paintings were already done and he was just sort of copying what he saw down at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, and uh, that's fine. There's no problem with that. Um, everybody likes to see something to look at and I'm sure that being on camera like that trying to get done in 27 minutes or whatever it was it took him uh, was something that uh, <laughs> not everybody could do very easily. Okay, so I've got some... Uh, uh, reflections here. Get some more of this paint and kind of come down here like this. Okay. Um, reflections are below all of these uh, at this water level here. Where the water is. Like this. That one here that goes a little bit that way. Um, Okay, so 
hopefully you can tell where the water is and where the uh, reflections start, hopefully. All right, now, let's keep moving on over here. We're getting to this area on the right side where I've got another big tree. I don't know if I can change the color of that or not. I'd like to change a little bit, but uh, one of the things that uh, I talk about periodically uh, is the, what cameras do to photographs. When you get a photograph like this, these, these trees are black. I mean, they're just totally black because of the silhouette, because the sun is shining right into the uh, camera lens. And when it does that, it shuts out, shuts down the light and it makes these things in silhouette look black. So, but if you were there, you would not be seeing black. You would be seeing some other color with brown in it, maybe. Uh, These are, there's a lot. This is another case where there's a thousand branches sticking out here. And to paint impressionistically, you don't need to paint every branch. You just need to let people see that there's a, a lot of branches here. And uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. And we've got two or three more over here. They all come down to this same area down here like that. Just more paper towel here. All right, let's see. More. Need more thinner paint. Got to get more thinner on top of this. I'm not doing a very good job reading your comments on the chat window there. I'm, uh, I'm going to concentrate quite a bit on these trees right now, so I hope I'm not missing or don't want to offend anybody for not reading their comments or questions. If you have a question that you've put in the chat window and I haven't read it, it's <clears throat> probably scanned or scrolled on by and I uh, missed it uh, just because I'm over here spending a lot of time trying to get these final trees in. Needs to be darker in there. Come on, dark, dark paint. All right. Bunches of, maybe put some more branches out here like this. Um, so we've been going about 40, 35, 40 minutes, something like that. Uh, these are all going to sort of reflect down into the water somehow. Put down something like that. We'll come back and go over those in a minute. But uh, let's put that in. Um, I, wanna, I could fine tune this a lot more if I wanted to spend a lot more time on it. I just kind of feel like I need to move on. I'll put you guys to sleep. I'm going to put some more, some uh, light. I'm going to use my big round brush and tap in some uh, light branches up there, light uh, bushiness uh, in a second. So there's that. All right, now we're at this area where we've got this right in here. We've got some junk that's kind of laying in the, in the water uh, across here like this. Let me get a little bit of this uh, brush and we'll just put in some like this. There's some things flicking up, growing up out of the water here. I don't even think you can see that hardly. It looks like it. when I turn around and look at the monitor, I don't see much back there. Uh, but let me see if I can make it stand out a little better for you. 
I'm just pulling up on these uh, on this brush to sort of make it look like we've got a not a bank but it's the the water level there where I want these things to show up and then below that is where we're having the reflection come down down here Try to dry my brush out and see if I can pull a little bit of this down like this see this is how you get those reflections come down and pull them down like that pick up a few darks pull them down here Vertical brush strokes, folks, is what does it, what, what makes it look like still water. See how nice that looks? Okay. All right, so looking pretty decent for the amount of time we spent on it. All right, um, let's see here now. While I've got this big round brush, I'm going to come back into some of these colors I had a while ago and put some tops on these trees here before I leave this area. Want them to be maybe a little darker because they are closer. So let's don't forget that. Um, turn the brush. Turn your hand. Don't make them all the same angle. Okay. Get plenty of darker paint on the brush and uh, get that paint in there and then just touch it. Just touch it. Very light. There's not much of that. There, very, most of them are all sort of fallen off the trees. Oops! I'm turning this this way here. Using the side of the brush, pushing up a little bit. Uh, you get some uh, get some nice uh, branches if you sort of push up once in a while. Don't want to do a lot of that, but just enough. Here, just put some more over here. Got to get some other colors in there. I'm getting too uh, following the uh, photograph a little bit too much. Okay, let's get this so I got some if you want to get these spread out you just kind of pound it down on the the uh, palette there and spread these bristles out so they they make thousands of marks instead of one or two. See how I did that? Look at the palette now. I'll just take this and once you pick up this paint, you get the bristles together like that. You don't want them together. Um, you want them spread. So pound it. Once you do that, you get them spread like that. I don't know if you can see that that well, but that gives you 500 little brush points there that you can tap. Over here, a few more. I gotta get some darker stuff right here. There we go. All right. I think you can get that, catch that pretty well. A few more over here, maybe. See. 
All right. That's awfully close to what we're trying to get. Um, I'm going to put some of that down here, actually, and I'm going to kind of duplicate some of that here and down here by just tapping in some of these same types of things like this. And then what do we do? We take our big brush, clean it out, make sure there's no paint in it, and come back and just very lightly come across here and give ourselves some blending, very, very light blending. Okay. So that's the scene, that's the water, that's the water line. Uh, I've got a couple things missing though, right? I don't have my bird in there. And so that's really what's left. Now that bird was actually in about right here by this tree, very close. So now we'll see how we're going to do that. I'm going to get another script liner here. You guys watch Clive Five Art or whatever it is, art videos? Yeah, Mark. Um, yeah, Clive and I and another artist had a collaboration series going on last, was it last summer? You know, we were all, we'd all put up a, a challenge for each other and uh, we all had to paint this, paint either the same thing or the same topic or something like that. I have some videos, I think it was 2016 where, uh, 17 maybe, I don't know. I have to look back in my, if you look at my playlist on my YouTube channel, you'll see a playlist that says collaboration videos. Those are ones I did with Clive and uh, another, uh, another artist and uh, we all shared that on each other's uh, channel. All right, so here we're going to use almost pure titanium white here for this bird. We're going to put him like right about here and we're going to make him like a kind of like a fence post almost is what I could think of a while ago when I was thinking about this. I'm going to make this bird. be a little bigger than that, maybe not. I'm making his body right now. And you don't have to put this bird in if you don't want to mess with it. Don't mess with it. Um, but it was in there and it was part of the scene and it's sort of the, talking about the theme of waiting for breakfast. This bird is sort of sitting here waiting waiting for something to happen See if I can get it right here it's not uh, going on exactly like I wanted it to but thing of it is, we can always repaint this thing if we have to. I need a little heavier paint. This uh, liquid white does do a number on your canvas. Let's make it a little bigger. All right. Let's think about that for a minute. Come back and put a little bill on him right here. Can't see that. It'll be darker than what's behind it or you won't see it. So let me go get some midnight black here and put a I don't know if you can see that at all either. It's uh, kind of small. 
but um, scheme of things, it kind of helps tell the story. Why? <laughs> Not great, but uh, I can always repaint this thing if I need to. So he's just kind of sitting here waiting for something to happen. And uh, what he doesn't know is there's a surprise down here in the water. I do a little nose. And looks like a but it's actually an alligator, folks. We got this guy's waiting for breakfast too. So so we'll put a couple little uh, ripples around him kind of indicate there's some water movement maybe here he's moving this guy is not sure what's going on over here um, put a little more of that distinct make that a little more distinct back here with the, uh, the bank I can come back and I'm going to come back and touch that up a little bit, but I uh, wanted to see if I could put an alligator in here. He's just coasting right there. If I didn't tell you what it was, you'd think it was a log maybe. I don't know. But uh, a few more reflections. Um, we could have a few more trees in here, a few more bushes and branches and stuff floating around here. There's a bunch of junk in this area. Um, let's uh, get this brush and put a few more there we go, some of that here. And we'll pull a little bit of this down. <clears throat> This guy fit in with the water a little bit better. Okay. Well, that's a uh, a good try, I think. I hope you like that. Um, I didn't really like how that this bird came out very well. It doesn't look like the kind of bird that I saw in the photograph, but. Um, Make it a little bigger, I don't know. Okay. Okay, you can't see that very well, I don't think, but uh, it's not the greatest bird I've ever made, but uh, nevertheless, he's there, and I think um, somebody asked a question about uh, using water-soluble oils. Yes, I've tried those, um, and they uh, they work. There are some nice ones out there. Um, <clears throat> they do leave a little bit different uh, gloss on the canvas when you're done with them. Uh, but they do, uh, they do work, um, and they look. Uh, at, at, I think you can still get better uh, sheen or better uh, looks with uh, pure oils than you can with water soluble. But um, that's sort of my own bias, I think. But uh, if you don't want the toxicity, however, I think a lot of people think that oil paints are very toxic. I think. Over the years, the toxicity has been uh, removed from most of the 
most of the oil paints, I don't think, other than maybe cadmium colors, most all the oil paints have uh, have no warnings on them anymore. They're not really as toxic as uh, they used to be. Um, put a few more things in here. There's some stuff in the things growing out here that are in the water. So this is a fairly low, low level. Um, let me see if I can put a few more dark this is really not quite dark enough down here. Ooh, that's a little too dark, but let me put a, another. I'm about finished here, folks. If you're tired of watching, you can tune me out. But uh, I wanted to uh, try to get this as close to the values as I can in the photograph. Um, there we go. I think I like my alligator better than I like my bird over there. Okay, let's see here. I'm take this and try to get some of this out of there. Again, just very quickly give it that. All right. Um, I think that's gonna about do it for me. Come over here and get a little bit of my black color here. And I'll throw my name on here and we'll call this finished. Get a little more black than that. Okay. I think that's about it, folks. Um, not too bad for a live broadcast where I can't stop and start and let it dry and uh, do the reflection of the bird. Thank you, Lindy. Good peck, good catch. I didn't get much reflection of that sun either. I got a little reflection of that sun, but I could use more. Um, you're right, good point. One more, a few more. Streaks down here. You see anything else I'm missing? Please let me know. Use my big brush again. Just touch it. Just touch it. There we go. We're getting that's looking better. This alligator is uh, coming over. Okay, folks, if you're interested in any of these wet-on-wet uh, -wet painting challenges or discussion, check out those Facebook page, both Bob Ross Appreciation Society and the Wet-on-Wet -wet Painting Club. They're both uh, private groups, so you have to ask to be a member, but uh, they let, a lot of, let everybody in pretty much, I think. I don't think there's any very few restrictions. Uh, but uh, it's a fun group to be a part of. So anyway, I think I'm going to stop with that and say thank you for watching. I've had myself in this painting a lot more than I like to be in a painting, but uh, because of the nature of the vertical uh, painting format, this portrait format, it's uh, <laughs> hard to keep me out of the painting, so out of the video actually. So uh, anyway, I'll, I think that's all I want to say for now. Uh, you can get the, the original photo and the grid photo and the value map on my website. Not the grid, but the value map and the sketch, as such as it was, on the website. Uh, the links will be below this video. And uh, check out my Facebook page and my website. And uh, let me know how you do if you give this painting a try. I hope you get a chance to try it and uh, have some fun with it. And uh, so I think until I see you next time, uh, that's all I want to say for now. This is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye.